Watch Good Morning Britain. Should we have a look at this morning's papers, which we must remind you went to press before those extraordinary pictures of Conservative MP and Foreign Office Minister Mark Field. Um, removing a climate protester from uh, the Mansion House speech, from him making a speech, in, a, in at the very least an unedifying way, I think we can say. There have been accusations even of assault. So that it was late last night, wasn't it? Undoubtedly, they would have been on the front pages had it been Definitely, in time. but it was a bit too late for them. As a result, though, pretty much all the papers lead on the race for number 10 between Jeremy Hunt and Boris Johnson, which the Times calls a dirty battle. There are accusations that Mr Johnson used dark arts to see off Michael Gove. Uh, the Daily Mail's headline takes the same view as others, focusing on Mr Johnson's revenge over Mr Gove. And focusing on the forthcoming head-to-head, -head, the Daily Mirror asks if either the liar Boris Johnson or the NHS wrecker Jeremy Hunt will be the next Prime Minister. Well, we're going to talk about all of this. We're joined now by broadcaster Ian Dale and former Home Secretary Jackie Smith. Should we start with that, the most recent story that, that everyone's talking about at the moment, and that is Mark Field at the Mansion House speech removing this climate change protest, we believe, from Greenpeace. Um, let, we'll watch the footage again. Did you have an instant reaction to it, first of all, Ian? Um... It doesn't look good from Mark Field's point of view because of the look on his face and the fact that he grabbed her by the neck. But I, I completely understand the instant reaction that he had because in the current security circumstances, who knows what she might have been capable of doing. And as, as you said, Sean, at the beginning, had she actually been some sort of terrorist, we would be having a very different conversation now. And, um, I mean, I have... A recollection of something that happened to me six years ago on Good Morning Britain, live on Good Morning Britain. Um, I was in publishing at the time, and so my, this is you, my author, Damon McBride, was on the seafront being interviewed by Lorraine Kelly. And I saw this happening, and I went and pulled this guy away from the camera because your sound guy was trying to edge him out as well. And he then turned round and swung at me, and we, end well, you can see, we ended up on the ground. Now, I felt that I was in complete control there. I was not being violent, mm. but the fact that I pulled him away from the camera, technically, I was guilty of assault. And even, so, actually, when you and look action at... was taken against and you. An action was taken and against And what action did you face? Um, I, well, it's a long story, but I was given a police caution. Now, that was partly mm. because the, the day before, Caroline Lucas had been arrested by the same police force for... Um, I think she was on some sort of protest. And um, I remember being in the police station and suddenly the police constable left the room and the big boss came in. And I thought, oh, here we go. And I thought, well, if they, if they do her, they, they're not going to let me off. So you have first-hand experience of being in a situation yeah. where, I mean, there was a live broadcast happening. It wasn't, a, it wasn't a security incident, no, no, no. make that clear. Yeah, but, but well, a situation where there's a live broadcast mm. happening, but you still felt like this person threatened what was going to happen and you wanted no. to stop that well, happening? <laughs> well, I wanted, to, I wanted the interview to progress as it should do because he, he was preventing that from happening. I'm, I'm not sure you've shown that bit, but he had this anti-nuclear placard which was behind Damien's face, and no-one was listening to what Damien was saying about his book. No. And, as I say, the GMB sound guy was, try, was trying to edge him out of the shot, so I went and, what I thought, assisted the sound okay. guy, but it, so, it all so went wrong. Just, pausing, what the pausing the, just, just one, one more question, my mate. So, pausing the idea that it was a physical threat, yeah. which I think yeah. this potentially could have had with yeah. Mark Field, um, but you felt that it wasn't. Do, do you think that you have a right to physically remove somebody if things aren't going where they want? Because what Mark Field has been accused of as well is that, you know, it was disrupting the chance of the speech and it was causing yeah. an embarrassment to have the protest there and that was one of the reasons why he might have acted to think, well, right, enough of this, yeah. which was sort of your well, instinct, are we, are wasn't we, it? Are we going to have um, a situation where any protester can go into any room and disrupt any event mm. with no consequences? Because that's effectively what some people are, are saying. Mm. I mean, we had the Theresa May incident the Tory party conference where somebody who did not have malign intentions but just wanted a bit of publicity but who who was to know that mm. i mean if that guy if somebody if a tory party member in that audience had got up and smacked the guy in the face I mean, a lot of people would have cheered that because they yeah. would have thought there was a potential mm. threat to the Prime Minister. OK, Jackie, from your perspective, you've been frontline politics, you've got friends that are frontline politics in this sort of situation. 
Do you think that it, he reacted in the in the correct manner? Was it too much force? I don't think he he behaved appropriately. No, I think he's in trouble, and I think he deserves to be. Because... So what? Because it was too aggressive, yes. or because he did it at all? <clears throat> no, because it was too aggressive. I think you know it's reasonable if he'd been fearful uh, to put himself between the protester and um, the uh, the chancellor. But I don't think genu I think frankly that is an excuse that he's made up after the event. I think he was... It's easy really... for you to say that. Uh, mm. Well, OK, but I think, um, you know, it was also perfectly possible for him to, um, you know, uh, deal with that woman in a way that didn't involve gripping her around the neck, I frankly. know, but, and but, I think but uh, let's it's just a, have a moment of humanity for... Uh, for, for, well, uh, for, for somebody who was doing a legal protest, perhaps. Well, maybe true, but just on the other side, you know, he's sitting with his back to her, he sees the situation developing, adrenaline... Was he the in. only human did in the room, Did he push then? her or did he block...? Well, maybe he was the only, was the only one who stepped this up, This is what he, he said. Might argue. Uh, in his statement, he says, there was no security present. I was, for a split second, genuinely worried she might have been armed. I deeply regret the episode. Unreservedly apologise to the lady concerned for grabbing her, but in the current climate, I felt the need to act decisively to close down the threat to the safety of those present. You see, I can I, I can imagine a situation. No there, actually. I can imagine a situation where Tony Blair was giving that speech. You were sitting where Mark Field was. You heard this commotion behind you. You saw something that you thought might have happened. I think you would have taken some action. I don't think I would have grabbed somebody by the throat, well, Ian, frankly. You may not have done, but I, I still think your natural instinct would have been to intervene. Do you think it's, it's, it's a, a, a worse view, a worse optic, because it's a man to a woman? Yes. Yes. I mean, there's no, no question about it. Because she was unlikely I mean, to be posing him a physical Legend threat? has it in that piece that you just showed that I beat up a pensioner. Now, you saw in that that yeah. I was completely controlled. There was no violence on I don't know, part. Ian. I mean, you might have felt controlled, but it does look like a right old scuffle with arms flailing. I think things can feel different from they look. I mean, you know, it looks... It looks you, don't, you know what yeah, I mean? I know, it doesn't... But, yeah, did you take saw that. a swing he at him. Tried to hit me. Yeah. I, I did not try yeah. and hit him back. No. I mean, the, the saving grace was that his dog um, started by... You're holding but, him down. Hit, well, I was holding him down to try and keep him away from the camera. I was doing yeah. a service to Good Morning Britain. So, so, yeah. so Lorraine got... Kelly had no idea what was going on. It was hilarious. <laughs> so you've got a caution. Did, he, did anything happen to him for no. taking a swing at you? No. I'd only got a caution because another journalist mm. reported it to the police. I mean, mm. well, this is, I mean, this has clearly been reported to the police now. Uh, mm. Jackie, what do you think uh, should happen to Mark Field? Well, I think the first thing that should happen is that the police should, if it's been reported to the police, the police should look carefully at what's happened and they should talk to the people involved. You know, I'm not in favour of a knee-jerk reaction here, but my response to what I've seen is that I think he overreacted, but mm. I'm not I the police. I saw that knee-jerking a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> well, everybody who... is interesting, isn't it? Everybody who's looked at it this morning, uh, who I've been uh, with off, off the set, has been shocked at it, and I think mm. that is people's first it's Joe, mm. Joe reaction, reaction this morning. He felt uncomfortable watching yeah. it. Mm. But in that situation, when we're all confronted with a, a moment like that, and obviously Mark Field wants to protect the speaker that's up there, it's, it's, they're, they're disrupting an event that's an important event for them and the party, yeah, he would have felt frustrated. We've all been... Uh, I think we talked about this on the podcast. Uh, if you are a senior minister, you will have been at an event where there's been a protest. Mm. Right? That's what you live with. It is not the end of the world. Uh, I have some sympathy with the point that those women were making. I don't have much sympathy with the idea of disrupting a public event like that. I think there are other ways of doing it. But I don't think there was any suggestion from the rest of the protests that was going on that this was, in some way or another, going to be violent. I think it was clearly shouting and making the point about climate change, which, to be honest, is a big responsibility of the Chancellor and is a legitimate protest. So, he has apologised, Mark Field. Jeremy Hunt is his boss, mm. about <laughs> to have a first day of campaigning against uh, Boris Johnson for the Tory leadership. Quite good fun if it got physical, wouldn't it? Bo Boris Maybe and Jeremy. Who would you put your money on? Yeah, I mean, that's an interesting question, <laughs> you see, I, th I think that would mean that Boris would go for Jeremy Hunt's midriff and just sort of, like, go in like that. <laughs> like you did with that Japanese child. Yeah, when he tackled him and they were... Because those... Ian is, like, the umpire of the hustings. Well, yes, you the ref. You're are you going to be getting between them or are you going to well, be promoting knows? a bit who of fisticuffs? You're chairing the debates. They're going to be going around the country having yeah, now, aren't they, the two of them? Yeah, first one's tomorrow in Birmingham. First one's tomorrow in Birmingham. 
I mean, Jeremy's going to be asked about this and whether he should now, leave his job. <laughs> <laughs> Do you think now. you might ask him about I this? I think I might. Okay. Because I am going to... It's not just questions from Tory party members that I've got to compare. I've got to do, I think, 15 minutes with each of them. And um, it's up to me what I ask them. So thanks, Kate, for putting <laughs> no that in my mind. No problem at all. I'd be a little bit worried, Ian, if it was Kate that put that idea into your mind. <laughs> I think there's a reason you're doing these hustings. And it's not me. Exactly that. Not me. Uh, but, it, but I guess, Jackie, the question for Jeremy Hunt is what sort of, um, what sort of uh, a, a challenge can he mount against Boris Johnson in what we've seen statistically seems to be a procession towards a coronation? Well, yeah, I think Boris Johnson is delighted that he's facing Jeremy Hunt. Uh, I don't think Jeremy Hunt... Delighted is or organised it to be well, the case? Because uh, that's the accusations, isn't it? Yeah. That, that his votes uh, have been shifted does that, yes. does, uh, does that Jeremy. matter? Does well, that matter? Um, look... All's, you could argue all's fair in love and Tory leadership contests. <laughs> and um, Gavin Williamson, who's been doing the whipping operation for Boris Johnson, uh, perhaps should be congratulated for having manoeuvred the result in the way in which it's ended up. And I do suspect there's been some manoeuvring. But, you know, frankly, that is... Uh, Reg as I regard, yeah. leadership. Does it matter? In. No, not really. I, I think Gavin Williamson has done a brilliant job for Boris Johnson. Apparently, they gave Boris Johnson a sealed envelope before the result on the first two rounds and said, right, Boris, open that after we've got the result. And they got the exact number of votes each time that Goodness he got. Me. So they now were that, the that, 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 is, that is skilled whipping. Here's another... Yeah, he's a skilled whip, but here's another question well, for Ian control. to ask Boris Johnson. Oh, Are you going to put back in the Cabinet somebody who was fired for leaking secrets? Well, I know the, I know the answer and it's, that. And well, it, I'm it, not we, forming my Cabinet in yeah, front of you, Yeah, and it will be shocking when he does it. Mm. Yeah, Do you think Williams he will, yeah, I, th I think oh. he will because I think he's got no moral compass. I think he will make Gavin Williamson his chief whip. Um, he, Gavin Williamson was a brilliant chief whip for Theresa May. Can Jeremy Hunt offer a decent challenge? Yes, he can. How does he do it over these hustings, Ian? There, there's got to be a moment that um, Jeremy Hunt has, a bit like when Cameron made that mm -hmm. speech at the 2005 mm -hmm. Tory conference when I, I was David Davis's chief of staff at the time. And, what was the and that difference? instantly changed the dynamic. But what was the difference in terms of... Um, David Davis was the favourite to get it, but what was it? Was it as dramatic a difference between, as we see between Boris and... Jeremy. Yes, because at that point, David had a huge number of MP backers and Cameron had very few. And that instantly changed the dynamic of the contest. And as soon as the media basically overreacted to the brilliance of his speech and the dullness of David Davis's speech, but that's what happens in mm. these circumstances. And we kind of knew that that was, that was it, game over. And Jeremy Hunt has got to try and engineer something like that. I don't know how Maybe he does it. Maybe his yeah. response to what should he do with Mark Field could be the moment that well, he takes a prime ministerial line. Crises are off to offer opportunities rather than threats. Yeah. They offer the opportunity for a political leader to really make a mark. Mm. Now, I'm not sure this one particularly does, but you never know. But well, it's not within Jeremy Hunt's power to sack Mark no. Field, by the way. That has to be done by the prime minister. he could minister. offer an opinion to he, I think, will have to offer an He'll opinion. He'll have to, yeah. Oh, lots well, of you, to be preferably fair, they tomorrow. Should both offer, they should <laughs> yeah, both offer an opinion. I don't think. Yeah. I don't yeah. think Boris Johnson can get yeah. away with not offering an opinion. The majority of what would you do if the majority of our viewers yeah. getting in touch this morning think that what he did was the right. Uh, Alex yeah. says he acted accordingly, did what anyone would do in that situation. Craig says he handed it superbly, in my opinion. A firm ejection of the premises. Jamie, I've done the same thing. The woman presented a danger she was dealt with. Mm -hmm. uh, the guy. I needs work a... in security. Um, and I have to wonder where the security was, but actually the way he did it was not dissimilar to the way we're taught to. A lot of people take issue with the fact they're saying the throat when actually it was the back of the neck. Yeah. But then a few say, Julie's saying it is assault. If any public worker acted like that, they would be sacked. Uh, Lee says he appears to have anger issues. I think you were talking about the look mm. on his face. He seems to be very intent yeah. on... I mean, there being no. If you. I don't encourage people to rewatch that video, but at the end of it, there is a comedy element to it because the protester's dog doesn't start biting me, it starts biting its own owner. Mm. And so that added a that certain, was in your, that, your incident, yeah, certain yeah. comedy element to it. There was no comedy element in Mark Field's incident. No. That's, that, that's his problem, because he did look very angry. And you can, again, you can kind of understand it, but it doesn't do him any favours. On the a day where it's bring your dog to work day as well, and that protester had the, <laughs> dog, yeah. the dog had the sandwich board on as well, the sausage dog with the sandwich board. That's really sandwich taking board the dog to work, and isn't the, it? The, the funny thing, <laughs> about a few weeks ago, I met the protester again just outside the House of Commons. He's now a pro-Brexiteer, so we have oh, something in common. And, and <laughs> Did he... you persuade him? No, no, no. And he said, oh, look, my dog's at the vet's because it had a fight with the
with another dog and I can't afford the vet's fees. He said, can you help me? You're a millionaire. So I, <laughs> I wish I was a millionaire, but I did help him with the vet's fees. So oh. all's well that ended is well. It, isn't it just? There is a heart in there, Jackie, you see? <laughs> Somewhere. Uh, Jackie and Ian, thank you very much. We look forward to hearing how the hustings go as well, Ian.